Glory, 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 you too can receive how God brings two worlds together. The world of his kingdom and the world of your need and the world of your desperation. How God brings it together, the kingdom of God and the world of your need and the world of your desperation. This is exciting in the book to watch how God begins to expand and advance the kingdom. How he moves all the players in line and gets everything into the position of operation. So there's a radical advancement of his kingdom. And a desperate need is suddenly met that somebody is able to receive who didn't even realize they were able to receive. Because God had set the stage and set the platform. Understand everything God is doing in the book of Acts is really the acts of the Holy Spirit. Heaven is moving mightily. God is moving by his power. A great season of persecution had come to an end because God intervened and God stepped in the way and God shut it down and God blessed the very persecutor and turned him, turned him into one of the most radical, radical evangelists and apostles of his day. God can take somebody who's bent on hell and change them to be bent on heaven. Somebody running for hell, end up running for heaven. Someone dying to go to hell in order to and turn them around to live so they can go to heaven. God can take the very bottommost and make it the topmost. God can do exploits with your life. It does not matter who you are. Heaven wants to meet the need. Hallelujah. And the great season of persecution had ended for a time being. Paul had been knocked off his horse, had been won to the cross, and now God is advancing the kingdom, verse 31. And it said, in the churches throughout all of Judea and Galilee and Samaria, they had peace and were edified. Every time there's a peace moment, it's growth moment. The Holy Ghost is always on the move forward. Heaven is always operating, and we are the ones that are the receivers. We are the ones that are the ministers. We are the ones that are the servants. And it's time now to expand and advance the kingdom of God. And the Bible says, and everybody was walking in the fear of God. Somebody say the fear of the Lord. You know, a one accord anointing brings the radicalness of the fear of God. A one accord anointing when the people of God are united under the authority of the Holy Ghost brings such a revelation of heaven that the rest of the world has to take note that the church is unified around the cross. The church is unified. He's now unified around the resurrection. The church is unified around the Savior. And when the church is unified, it brings a radical presence of God and the presence of God brings the revelation of holiness and the fear of God begins to move it and men begin to shake on the inside because that is a platform for the radicalness of the anointing and an outpouring of the Holy Ghost. Somebody say hallelujah. Yeah. Because they were walking in the fear of God, they were comforted of the Holy Ghost, and the Bible says, and they began to do what? Multiply. Somebody say multiply. Look at your Bible. What does it say happened when they walked in the fear of God and the comfort of the Holy Ghost? What did they do? What did they do? What does it say? What did they do? What did it say? Multiplied. They began to multiply. There's growth. There was increase, and when it does, it now jumps into a story where now we got two worlds about to come together. On the other side of this story, there is a desperate need, and the man's name is Cornelius. He is a centurion. He's, he's got a hundred soldiers under him, but all through his being, he has a hunger and a thirsting for God. He doesn't know if he is a candidate because he's not Jewish. He's in a position of wanting to be righteous. He's in a position of wanting to walk in the fear of God. He's in a position of being obedient to God. He's in a position. And you can see this man on his face, in his place, wanting to know God deeper and better. And on the other side, you see heaven moving in his direction. Somebody say hallelujah. Here is a man who's in desperate need of God. And over here you begin to see God's moving. And God is bringing everything together so two worlds can become one. God knows exactly where you're at. He knows exactly how to run right into you. He is setting it up. And the Bible says in verse 32, that came to pass as Peter went through all the parts of the country. Peter now got up and he begins to move forward. He begins to move forward to expand the church. 
He's going to visit the churches in Lydda and Sharon and ultimately a church in Joppa. He's going to minister to where God had already begun to move and he wants to strengthen the apostolic authority. He wants to strengthen the ministry. Heaven, heaven is on the move forward. we got peace in the season and now it's time for the advancement of the kingdom of God. The Bible says that when he came down to, to, to Lydda, there had been a small church there. And went into the church, they, he found somebody, somebody that everybody knew, and his name was Aeneas, and Aeneas was a guy who'd been lame for eight years, he must have fallen, he was paralyzed, and everybody knew him. But the Spirit of God had a great plan, because he was advancing the authority of his kingdom. Peter walked in and begins to minister to that local church, begins to minister to that area. And there is this man laying there. He's been paralyzed for eight years, and the Holy Ghost is in the house. Somebody say Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is in the house. God wants to be in the house. God, listen, if we are willing, we can let the Holy Spirit have the front row. Let him be in charge. Let him be in control. Let him move this thing. And Peter walked in there, not under his own power, but under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And when he walked in there and began to minister, there was this man laying there, a per total candidate for the breakthrough of God. And this is just the beginning. This is just the setup for a gentleman named Cornelius. And yet Jesus is moving and expanding in the body of Christ. And Peter looks at him and says, Cornelius, or he says, Aeneas, sorry, I don't want to get too, too far ahead of myself. He says, Aeneas, I got a revelation coming by the Spirit of God. The Holy Ghost in the house has something for you. And Aeneas, he says, Jesus, who is the Christ, liberates you now. He got the revelation of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God moved right in on that service and put, and put all the energy right on Aeneas. And here you've got Peter looking at him and the glory of God shot right in that man's direction. And he said, Aeneas, guess what? I got a revelation from God. The Lord Jesus Christ now heals you. You are liberated. The power of God is on you. Now stand up and make your bed. It's time for a transformation of your life. And instantly the power of God hits this man and he is totally healed. Somebody say hallelujah. When he is healed, then this miracle takes place. The Bible says everything changes. Everybody who dwelt in Lydda and in, the, and in the neighboring town of Sharon, everybody came to Christ. The visitation of God, the power of God, the demonstration of God. And two cities were won to Jesus Christ because of one miracle. Two towns were won to Jesus because of one miracle. One man that everybody knew is suddenly healed. And the conviction of God sweeps in. And Peter begins to advance in his crusade as he's operating in that place. And I can guarantee you, service after service was full of the Holy Ghost. Verse 36. But at Joppa, just a short part away, just a little bit away, there is another church which is operating. And the Bible says, and there was a disciple whose name was Tabitha. And the woman was full of good works and charitable deeds, which she did. And it happened that in those days she became sick and she died. And when they had washed her, they had laid her in the upper room, but there was something in these disciples. In the meantime, you've got Cornelius on the other side who was waiting on God and waiting on God and waiting on God. And yet now we've got something happening in Joppa which is getting, which is getting Peter closer to Caesarea. Things are moving in that direction. And in this place there was a woman who, who had just died. And the thing that's interesting is the disciples there recognized the authority of the anointing and the apostolic power that was on Peter's life. If you go back a couple of chapters, you will recognize that at that season, even the shadow of Peter going across people that were sick, they were made whole. The Holy Ghost, the anointing, was so powerful on him that this very shadow coming across people, across people with shatter chains, yokes, drive out the divine. It was phenomenal church. Somebody say phenomenal. What a demonstration of the Holy Spirit that had been taking place. So when Peter is coming down, you've got this man of God and the anointing that's coming with him. The flow of apostolic authority has now come through. And they, and they realize that, that this man is, is just a little ways away. He's over in Lydda and here in Joppa. This woman has just died and this church knows who Peter is. And they've got such an anointing of faith that they're willing to say, would you go get Peter now? We believe in the glory of God. 
Let me tell you what you don't do. You don't try to raise somebody from the dead. You walk in the faith of God, the gift of faith, the gift of miracles, and the gift of healing. There's got to be a flow of the power of God on your life. There's got to be an anointing on your life. You don't try to raise somebody from the dead. There is a demonstration of the power of God which is taking place and is evident that it has the authority to drive death from a body. Today, so they call for Peter, and Peter, and Peter comes quickly, and they say, and since it was near Joppa, verse 38, the disciples had heard that Peter was there, so they sent two men to him, imploring him not to delay in coming to them, because they wanted to have this woman healed even before they buried her. And Peter arose, verse 39, and he went with them. And when he came into the upper room, and he saw all the widows that standing by weeping, showing all the great things that she had done. This is, this, is, this is a scripture all in itself. And everybody's standing around weeping and, and they're crying and they're, and they're seeing all the wonderful things that, that, that this woman had done. And Peter has to kind of go, okay, shut up, everybody out, everybody out, everybody out. Somebody go, hallelujah. Get out. Get out. Get all the weeping and the crying and all the, and all the boo-hooing. Get out. Somebody say, get out. Get it out. Miracles don't happen in the boo-hoo. You got to get it out. So Peter drives all the boo-hoo and out of the other room. Go, 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 go. Peter knows the anointing. He gets down on the floor, turns his head away from the dead woman, presses it on God, gets a revelation, a gift of faith and miracles and healing. The anointing of God pours down all over him and he rises up, turns and says, woman, get up. Somebody say hallelujah. He said, woman, wake up. And she opened her eyes. And another revival breaks out across that place. And now we've got three cities flowing in the power of God. And you know what's exciting? God isn't done yet. Somebody say hallelujah. God's just getting going here. It's advancement time. You too can receive. A lot of people would just camp here. Now we've got a great revival holy. And Peter is now moving in this place. And the things of God are flowing. He's building up the churches in those areas. But the spirit of God is not done. Why? Because there is another one. There is a centurion. There is a man who's desperate and hungry. And he's not too terribly far away. And he's been waiting on God and waiting on God. He's been hungry for God. He's been blessing where he can bless. In fact, he's got his whole household on fire for God. They really want whatever God has got. And they're, and they're in a place of desperation. And that's the best place to be as a believer. How can God move on your behalf if you're not desperate for God? How can you have the breakthrough in your life if you don't want to walk in the breakthrough? How can you have the healing if you're not going to stand for the healing of God? But yet here is a man who is technically not, he's not a believer. He's an Italian centurion or he's a Roman. So he's outside of the potential ability to receive. There is a cultural division between these two areas, and yet the Spirit of God is saying, uh-uh, I'm in control here. Jesus died for how many? All. He didn't die for some. He didn't die for a few. Jesus died for all. Somebody say all. Doesn't matter your nationality. Doesn't matter your skin culture. It's color. It doesn't matter, your, it doesn't matter your, your sex. It doesn't matter. He died for all. Somebody say all. We got to get that back here in the church. We got this back in this nation. Jesus Christ died for all. And you've got this situation. Now you've got Peter in this revival. And now you've got Cornelius who's been waiting on God and hungry for God and doesn't even realize God is about to bring everything together for his breakthrough, chapter 10. And there was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius centurion of what was called the Italian regiment. Being Italian, I kind of look at that and go, mm-hmm. It was a devout man. The Bible says one who feared God. Now listen, because he was a man that feared God, that means he wanted to walk in the holiness of God. He wanted to walk in the righteousness of God. He's a man who wanted to know the standards of God. This guy had a hundred soldiers underneath him, but none of it meant a thing because the standard and the right, because his heart was desperate for the touch of God. You too can receive. Miracles are happening here. And here's a man on his face, desperate for the touch of God, imploring heaven. And heaven's right on time. 
And the Bible says while he's in there and he's praying and he's believing, the man was an active man. He was willing to give whatever he could. He, he tried to meet needs, not because he was trying to earn good favor, but because he just was a man who was hungry after God. He had the fear of God on him. He wanted to walk in righteousness. He was generous. He was always in prayer. And everything was going on in, in, in verse 3. While he was in prayer, somebody say in prayer. While he was in that place, 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Somebody say 3 o'clock. Just as, the, just as the little clock struck or the little sundial, if there was a bell in that day, said 3 o'clock. The Bible says in the, in the ninth hour of the day, he clearly saw in a vision an angel of God coming in and saying to him, Cornelius, God knows how to find you. God knows how to find you. No matter where you're at, God can find you. If you're broken and desperate for God, God can find you. This man wasn't saved, but he was a candidate in his heart. He's desperate and hungry for heaven. People understand, God can find you. You too can be blessed. You just got to be in the place, on the inside. It don't matter where in the earth you are. As long as you're desperate for God, as long as you're hungry for God, as long as you're in that place, God hears your faith. God knows how to find you, and God knows how to bring a message of utter deliverance and power to your being. And the Bible says the angel of God came in and called out his name. In total fear of the presence of God, he says, what is it, Lord? Your prayers and your giving and your actions, everything about your heart have come up like an offering before heaven. God has found you. God heard you. Now here's what I need you to do. We're going to advance the kingdom. I'm going to bring two things together. I want you to send men to... Think about a very clear word of wisdom and knowledge by the angel of God into this man so he can receive the miracle out of heaven. And the angel of God said, here's what you're going to do. You are going to send men to Joppa. And you're going to send for Simon, whose surname is Peter. I mean, he even tells them where he is. He's lodging with Simon, whose name is, who happens to be a tanner. So we got Simon Peter and Simon the tanner, whose house is by the sea. He will come and he will tell you what to do. Heaven is even using Cornelius to advance the very kingdom of God. Heaven knows exactly where you're at. And your life is an advancement of the kingdom of God. You being desperate is an advancement. The Holy Ghost is always looking where he can bring the revelation of Jesus. How we can advance the glory of heaven. And he says, I want you to send and I want you to bring Simon Peter here. Send for. Peter knows nothing about this yet. It doesn't matter because God is in charge of this move. Send men to Joppa. There is one Simon Peter who is dwelling with one Simon, who's also, think about it, two Simons in the house. Simon Peter, talk who? Simon, okay, who? Simon Peter, Simon the Tanner, dwelling in a house by the sea. They're going to know where the house is because all you ask is for Simon the Tanner. So what does Cornelius do? See, his household, he has demonstrated his hunger for God because he's got his whole household. He is that... Let me say hallelujah. Listen, you can hide your faith or you can demand that that covers your entire house. And Cornelius had his whole house clothed in what he was hungry for. He had devout soldiers that were hungry and thirsty because Cornelius in his own right was almost like an evangelist to his home, to those around him, wanting to get everybody hungry for God and he was just doing what he could. He felt he was on the outside and looking toward the inside and yet God found him just where he was. God knew where he was and God said it's time for the visitation and it's time for the advancement of the kingdom. So what does he do? He calls two of his household servants, verse 7. And a devout soldier, somebody say devout. Somebody who was near and dear. Somebody who had his heart. Somebody who had the heart of faith or wanted to have the heart of faith, the Cornelius. Somebody he could trust as a son. This is who this person was. And he brings them together. These that continually waited on him. And he explained everything that had happened and he sends them forth to Joppa. Can you imagine? He sent heaven has just invaded his prayer time. 
What would you do if heaven invaded your prayer time? Is your prayer time the kind of prayer time that heaven could invade? Is your prayer time the kind of prayer time that heaven can invade? Oh, that's good. Huh. Is your prayer time the kind of prayer time heaven can invade? And heaven invaded his prayer time. Heaven told him what to do. And he sends two servants and a devout soldier. And he gives them the request. I need you to go to Joppa. I need you to get Peter. And the reason why I need you to do it is because I'm going to fill the house. Somebody say fill the house. Because I know there is a revelation of God's word coming to me. Something's coming. Heaven has just told me that this one's going to come. He's going to tell us what to do. I've been desperate and hungry. And when he sends them off, he's going to turn. He's going to find everybody he can find. He's going to pack the house. Somebody say hallelujah. God, when you're that desperate, you want others to join in your desperation. Verse 9. And they leave, and on the next day, they've traveled that day from the afternoon to the evening, and, and now they've come after the evening hour, they've come into the day, and, and on their way in, now they're, now they're drawing near to Joppa, and God is like, okay, now let's move to the... To see, see, you got to love the work of the Holy Spirit here. you got to love the work of heaven here. Heaven is active. Somebody say active. Listen, folks, God is not dead. Come on, church, we have, we have, we have we've allowed the Holy Spirit to be pushed to a corner and, and given in one little section, maybe in the service, where he's allowed to move, and then even then, we want to put him in a box because we don't want to disrupt or interrupt the agenda, and I'm saying it right, the agenda and the direction we had, and we wonder why we don't have miracles, signs and wonders, breakthrough, or revival in the nation because we've limited God to a little tiny sector of the entire service and said, now this is all you can Get Jesus. And then we wonder why we have a nation going to hell. Wonder why a generation is being stolen from our very presence. Wonder why things are happening. And yet there is a potential. Somebody say potential. So don't give God the corner of the service. Give God the service and put your agenda in the corner of the service. Somebody say hallelujah. Put God in the center. Put your agenda in the corner. Is your prayer life or prayer life God can invade? And the next day as they went on their journey, they began to draw near the city. God kind of like gives the old crack and the Holy Spirit gets all over Peter and he's hungry. Now you got to understand this. People kind of look at this and they get kind of squirrely, but you got to remember in those days. I was overseas some years ago in the Philippines, and I went into a market. And the market wasn't, it wasn't jeweled. It wasn't Walmart. Everything was freshly kind of mostly dead, and some of it had been mostly dead all day, or dead all day. It's 102 degrees outside. There was no air conditioning in the marketplace. We walk on the inside of this building, and fish that have been in these buckets since 5 o'clock in the morning are getting pretty rancid, and the meat is just laid out, dead chickens and who heck knows what else, just laid out on corners, on counters, just for you to want to eat. Someone tried to sell me a rat's tail. I couldn't see the peanuts for the flies that were on the peanuts. I'm not kidding. And we, and we came in with our camera to film and be so sweet. And the guy's holding his kid on the shoulder and he's shoving all the, he's, he's getting all the flies away from the penis because he wants me to buy. And there's some poor little woman there and she's got like maybe like, maybe like one, tooth in her, one tooth in her mouth and she's got a cigarette and she's trying to smile. We're like, you know what, Jesus loves you, but no, I'm not buying that rat's behind. There's no way I want that. Don't tell me that's good meat. Where's the rest of the rat? But you see, the culture is, that's how you got your food. You went to the market and it was dead. And here it's starting to swell. And you're going to take this thing home. You're going to gut it. You're going to clean it. You're going to pluck what's off of it. You're going to throw it in hot water. You are going to rise, kill, and eat. (laughs) Or really close to it. So Peter is getting hungry. It's, It's new. And they just didn't have bacon and eggs without slaughtering the pig in the yard. This was real time to eat. 
and he's hungry. And God invades the very moment that he puts down on Peter because Peter isn't exactly the place for the next move of heaven. There was a desperate heart, and God is using a desperate heart in order to bring a whole new advancement of his kingdom. And here you've got someone who's in the place of, all, of total obedience and someone here in a place of total desperation. So we get obedience is about to connect with desperation, and you're about to see a miracle. Peter goes up on the roof, and he's hungry. And suddenly he's overwhelmed by a mass hunger, the kind of hunger that would, have, that would send you scurrying to the store, pulling everything off the racks you possibly could. I think God put a little supernatural hunger on Peter to make him so desperate. My gosh, I got to eat, and I got to eat now. Give me something. I'll kill it right here. And God shows up, and suddenly Peter is in this trance because heaven's got it all set up, and he lowers the sheep by four corners into the middle of Peter's presence. And being a good Jewish person, there's a lot of things you don't eat. It's just not kosher. And there's all these things. Well, you wouldn't have, you wouldn't have eaten any of it. Somebody has to kill it. Somebody has to clean it. Somebody has to gut it. Somebody has to package it. Somebody has to stamp Dawn Dew Fresh on it before you even go near it. In the freezer section. And here it is, all of this animals in here. But there's so much unclean in there. And even in his hunger, he resists the Holy Spirit when the Holy Spirit says, Peter, arise, kill, and eat. Peter, here's lunch. And Peter says, I can't, Lord. I can't do it. It's kosher. Or it's not kosher. It's not right. It's against law. I can't eat this stuff. I've never eaten this kind of garbage. And the curtain goes up. And the side of the curtain comes back down again. And it opens up. And all this which is in there. And Peter is desperate. God says again, arise, Peter, kill and eat. Not so, Lord. I've never let such stuff touch me. Anything common or unclean, I would never touch. And God is responding to him. What God has cleansed, call not that unclean. And God has to break through an intense cultural barrier. And he's doing it because there's desperation on the other side of the breakthrough. And God has to bring this thing three times so we can shake the core of what Peter had gotten himself into. Religiosity will keep you from ever advancing in the kingdom of God until God shows you his power and his healing and his presence and his glory and his gifts are for today and his anointing is for your life. You might be locked in forever and never see the advancement or the success of the kingdom because you're going to say, no, Lord, God doesn't move. You don't move. You don't heal. You don't flow. And we need the Spirit of God to drop that thing like a sheet and say, yes, I do. Three times, he says. Now, Peter never arises and takes anything from it because it's in a trance and a vision. And he resists God. And God says, call that not un call that what God has cleansed, do not call unclean. As it lifts up for the third time. All this is taking place. As three obedient people have found the street, all this is happening here. A man is back and these three guys are coming to the door. And Peter's been getting a revelation of something that God is about to do. And he's about to be challenged because he knows out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, let everything be established. And God has just given him a trice, a thrice revelation into his life. So he knows that the Spirit of God is saying something. Why? Because he's a God-hungry man, full of the Holy Ghost and power, walking under the anointing of God. And he's about to let God change everything about his life. All the things that he's been walking in, God's about to turn it upside down. But he's a candidate for it. Can we be? And Peter was wondering within himself for something about the vision, which was meant, behold, the men were setting, the men were now at the door and knocking at it. 
He could have been fearful for his life. But the Spirit of God just speaks. You imagine the Spirit of God, Poof, Peter. Are you sensitive enough to really hear the Holy Spirit? Or is your mind too busy? The Spirit of God, because Peter's in that place. Church, we're, we have not been in that place as believers overall. We listen to ourselves, listen to our heart, listen to our worries, listen to our agendas. Maybe we read a little word, we get some kind of a life lesson, but listening to the Holy Spirit build our lives through the Word of God and bring us to a place out of captivity and walking in the fear of God and the hunger for the revelation of God's holiness. Now that's a place where we need to be because that's what revival is. It's lives being set free and transformed. It's not a bless me club. The Spirit of God says, Arise, Peter. Same word. Go down. Three men are at the door seeking you. Go with them and doubt nothing. You know the story, Peter brings them in. He lodges them for the night. And the next day, Peter heads on his way, but knowing that God has said something above and beyond anything they've ever done, Peter knows this is a radical move of heaven coming, and he knows something is about to take place. So he brings others with them, because what he wants is he wants a witness. He knows that heaven has just spoken very clearly and very evidently that something is about to change on the way we've been doing business. The Spirit of God is on the move, and he is moving us into a whole new level. Can you move with God? Can you move outside of your comfort zone? Can we allow heaven to take us to places in the Holy Ghost where you've never been in your life? Are you willing to be used of God all the way? Or are you going to hand God a cause calendar? I can only do it here, 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 or here. <clears throat> you imagine the expectation, the anticipation, because these three are going to tell Peter everything that they know. And they arrive. Somebody say arrive. Verse 25 and verse 24. And the following day, when they entered Caesarea, they entered Caesarea. Now Cornelius was waiting for them. He had called together his relatives, his close friends, everybody. He was so excited. He was so excited. But you see, they had something. They had heard of the message. They had heard John the Baptist's message. They had known there had been a, a Messiah. They had heard these things. They knew that something was out there. They were desperate. They were hungry. But are they on the outside or are they going to be on the inside? And he's got everybody together. He knows there was, somebody say he knows. There is a word coming. He's excited about that word. He knows that Peter's going to bring the word. His faith is through the roof. He's got everybody together with them. They are ready. Come on, how ready are we? And they walk in the door, and the guy gets so excited, he just throws himself at Peter's feet. He is so desperate for God. He picked him up, and he said, you know, it's unlawful for Jewish to stay company or go to another nation's house. This is a huge, this is a worldwide, or this is a world-changing event right here. There are races and cultures that would never cross a barrier or a wall to minister to the other side. You could lose your life to cross over that boat, to, to cross across that culture. And here, they're doing something that God is doing because their soul's desperate over here. And he says, you know, I'm not supposed to do that. But in the last day and a half, I've learned something. That God has said, I should not call any man common or unclean. So actually, believe it or not, Peter had a race problem. And the Spirit of God was just releasing to him, there is no difference. It does, there is no difference. Every life matters to God. All are equal in God's sight. Everyone needs redemption and deliverance and healing. There is no special group or, or special people or special gender. Everything belongs to Christ, and every man must be born again. And this is the Holy Ghost breaking down that barrier that the nation and the nations need to grasp with everything inside of them. Jesus is the barrier breaker. So he says, I've come because the Spirit of God has told me 
So Cornelius says, four days ago, I was fasting until this hour, until the ninth hour in prayer. So Peter showed up at three o'clock in the afternoon. He was says, at this hour, four days ago, I was fasting until this very hour in which you've walked through the door. And at that time, and as I was praying, behold, a man stood before me in black clothing. And so Cornelius, your prayers have been heard and your alms are remembered in the sight of God. And he just rehearses. Can you imagine how often he's been rehearsing this? Therefore, send to Joppa and call Simon, whose surname is Peter. He is lodging in the house of Simon, who is a tanner by the sea. And when he comes, he will, he will speak to you. So I, so, so I sent to you immediately, and you have now done well to come. Now, therefore, we are all present before God to hear the things commanded you by heaven. And I guarantee you, there was an anointing of glory that was beginning to fill that house. Because when Peter begins to open his mouth, it is the Holy Ghost that begins to move from him to them. The revelation of God from him to them. The acceptance of God from him to them. The understanding of Jesus Christ from him to them. It was a glory moment because every word that Peter was about to preach was anointed of the Spirit of God and like the wind of heaven was going to break against every one of their lives and every one of their beings. Peter opened his mouth and said, in truth, I perceive that God shows no partiality. But in every nation, whoever fears him and works righteousness is accepted. The word which God sent to the children of Israel, preaching peace through Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. You heard these things. You have heard that Jesus Christ was the one. And God has sent him peace of the, he is Lord of all. That work you know. That word you know, which is proclaimed first throughout all of Judea. So he's telling Cornelius, you are aware of the message. I'm about to confirm it. Began from Galilee through the baptism which John preached. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with great power. Who went about doing good. Healing all who were oppressed of the devil. For God was with them. Hallelujah. God was with them. And these guys are getting hungry because a move of heaven is coming across their life. And he rehearses who Jesus Christ was, how he was the one that God had anointed. And you heard about the very ministry because of John the Baptist. You've heard about this. You've heard about this. You've heard about this. You've heard about this. And now the revelation of God is saying the message you heard about there is the message being brought to you here. You too can receive. And we are witnesses of all these things, which he did both in the land of the Jews in Jerusalem, even though they killed and hung him on a tree, yet God raised him on the third day and showed him openly, not to all the people, but to witnesses chosen by God, even to us who ate and drank with him, as after he rose from the dead, and he has commanded us to preach to the people. Can you imagine when he reaches this moment, how the revelation of the anointing of God begins to swell? And he says, and he said, not only that, but he says he's commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that it is he who was ordained by God to be judge of the living and the dead. To him all the prophets witness that through his name, whoever, that's the word, through his name, whoever believes, let me say whoever, that's the word that Cornelius need. He wanted that forgiveness. He wanted that righteousness. And the spirit of God is being revealed. And he's getting the revelation. And then the key word, whoever believes in his name, hallelujah, has the forgiveness of sins. And at that moment, the wave of God swept into that house with such an anointing. And they instantly received and believed and the glory of God fell. The rain of heaven swept through. And they were gloriously saved and filled with the power of God. Because they were already in the place to receive. Are you in that place? You too can receive. God's word is for you no matter where you've been in life. No matter where you've walked in life. God knows how to find you. Heaven found him. The whole household was gloriously saved. The spirit of God was in control of this. There's no way they could not have been saved. Because they were desperate and hungry when the glory moved into the house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All sometimes you need to hear is the word and the anointing is coming on the word and when the word hits your spirit under the anointing of God it's an automatic revelation and the glory of God begins to shout because faith suddenly rises up inside of you and you realize it's done. Yes, it's done. Hallelujah by the precious blood of Jesus. It's done, it's done, it's done, it's done, it's done, it's done, it's done. And they began to receive because they were in the place to receive. Stand your feet in the house. Give the Lord a shout, would you please? Hallelujah. Everything about God's heart 
that you can receive abundantly from heaven. Heaven has what you need. Heaven has what you need. Are you thirsty for God? Let me pray with you tonight. Father, in the name of Jesus, everyone, every one of you who chose to stay with us and tune in with us tonight, I want you to know there's a God in heaven that loves you desperately. And you are always the candidate. You, too, can receive. Do you have the heart that's open? Do you, you have the spirit of God? Are you ready to receive? You say, look, Lord, I want to go all the way. I want the breakthrough of God. I want the healing of God. I want the miracles of God. I want the victory of God. I want redemption. I need, I need to walk in forgiveness. Whatever it is in your life, that revelation comes to you. The spirit of God is right there. You, too, can receive. You are a candidate for that breakthrough. You're a candidate for that because you're standing in that place. And Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I speak such life over them. From the sole of your feet to the crown of your head, that heaven would move in on you. The glory of God would overshadow you. That you would find out that God found you. No matter how lost or how hurting you thought you were. God has found you tonight. And you can rejoice in that. You can celebrate that. Say, Jesus... Be the Lord of my life. Come in. Save me. Heal me. Forgive me. Set me free. Restore me. Raise me up. And fill me. Jesus, I receive it. Everything you've got for my life. Put the desperate hunger for you inside my spirit. So I would reach to you with all that I am. So you could fill me with all that you are. You reach to him with all that you are so he can fill you with all that he is. Father, I speak that over your life now from the sole of your feet to the crown of your head. If you, if you let us know right there online that you prayed a prayer, you need prayer in any of our future services, please send that up to us. We're here at Standing in the Word Ministry. We want to see you blessed and brought to a place of breakthrough, healing, and deliverance. We are here to see God's kingdom advanced in your life. Hey, from Standard Word Ministries, I'm Pastor Richard Jovenet. And from all of us here, we say we love you. God bless you. Have an awesome day. Somebody give the Lord a shout in the house. Hallelujah. Lift your hands up before the Lord in this place right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you tonight. I know it's a little later tonight. But the Holy Spirit did not want me to lit up pressing in. So I wanted to follow his unction. I wanted to walk under that anointing and that flow for every life that was going to tune in tonight and, and your lives in the house tonight. That's just a strong, powerful word, how God met him right where his need was. Father, I speak that your people in this house tonight, you are the God that meets that. The Bible says the word's right in you. It's, it's in your mouth. It's in your heart. Every word that you can confess. You have to go to the heavens or to the depths of the earth to find God. God knows exactly where you are. Samuel told Saul that God had looked for a man who had his own heart and had found him. God found David because he heard that heart. Somebody say heard. He hears your faith. He hears your cry. Your cry comes before the throne of grace. Just as the angel said, your prayers and your alms have come up as a memorial before heaven. Heaven smelled the heart of desperation and hunger for holiness. And heaven responded. And an earth-shaking move took place. And the real beginning, <clears throat> the real beginning of the advancement of the book of Acts started. Gentile world suddenly swept into the kingdom of God. Ephesus, Corinth, and all the churches of Galatia, Philippi, Berea, and all the rest, Thessalonica. An advancement because of a radical breakthrough of heaven. The walls came down and people were delivered. And I speak that all your walls come down and God sets you free by the power of his blood. And Father, we give you all the praise for it radically in your awesome and excellent name. In the name of Jesus, and everybody in the house said, amen and amen. Give the Lord a good shout of praise. Let's hear the praise offer.